So rim in purple. More in blue. Rim putting all kinds of time into more as we approach the halfway point. Eight laps in, eight laps to go. Brendan Rim. 213 at the half. A little less than a mile to go for both riders. Brendan Rim continues to put time into Viggo Moore. Currently a three second advantage with five laps to go. tell me anything so okay I'll help you out as much as I can <laughs> two laps to go for both riders Marine runs a pretty tight ship she'll have the next several riders up <laughs> but yeah we'll, we'll get it in Bell and one to go for both riders Brendan Rim wins the bronze medal at this national championships. He is your elite individual pursuit champion. Viggo Moore takes fourth place. There he is, your bronze medalist. And we're setting things up now for the ride for gold between Anders Johnson, the fastest qualifier this morning, breaking that track record of Ashton Lambie, and on the back straight, Spencer Sigerbrook. And both riders off and underway. Once again, 16 laps, four kilometers. This is the gold medal final.
Johnson rode a 4.15.293 this morning. See if he can break that. Johnson opens things up with a 105.95 kilo. Let's go, Anders, you got this. Put things in perspective, last year's national championship time in the kilo was a 104.8. Both riders coming up on the halfway point. Eight laps in, eight laps to go. Andrews Johnson with a 2.08. More or less the same pace as this morning. We could see another track record here, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, in the pursuit, if you catch your opponent, you've won. Johnson is your national champion. 310, 3K. Fist bump, Segerbrook, silver medalist. That concludes the men's pursuit final. We have determined the medalists, and we're going to move things on to the women. Bronze medal will go to Bethany Matsik. And we're going straight to the gold medal final between Elizabeth Stevenson and Danielle Morshead now. So, Luke, what do you think of the racing so far? Starting the home straight, you got our fastest qualifier, Elizabeth Stevenson, on the back straight, Morshead.
Stevenson out of Detroit in all black. Morsehead on the back straight in blue of Team 2024. And both riders off and underway. Women race three kilometers, 12 laps. Stevenson, the faster qualifier, getting out to an early lead. Stevenson with a 106 kilo, Morshead with a 107 opener. Sorry. Stevenson with a 114.3, Morshead with a 115.2. Both riders coming up on the halfway point. Six laps in, six laps to go. Stevenson with a 1.4 second lead over Morshead. Anything can change in the back half. Morshead starting to fight back. So what do you think Luke can down Neil Morshead make up that second with three laps to go? Point six seconds the difference, two and a half laps to go. Just like you said, Luke, it's getting closer. Now point two. One and a half laps to go. Seven hundredths the difference. Here we go. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the louder you are, the faster they go. Stevenson takes War, the lead. Warshead now in the lead. the lead. Yep. And Stevenson squeaks it out three thirty-six thousandths of a second. What wow, do you have to say about that, race. Luke? What a race. Uh, congrats to both competitors. That was fun to watch, and that sets the evening off right there. I'll tell you that.
All right, let's give a big round of applause to both of these women. What an incredible race there. So Al, I've been told that there is beer here for the, uh, for the people watching. There is beer if that's what they're into. We got an electric atmosphere tonight here in LA. Lights are a little dim. And what do we got up next? Up next is the women's 15-18 sprint. We're in the semifinals now. We're gonna start off with the first of a best of three series in the women's junior 15 to 18 sprints. Then we'll go to the men. I wasn't kidding about the beer as well. I, I do believe there is a small beer garden here, if that interests any of the people watching. Um, I'm looking forward to this sprint event, Al. I really think that both heats will be very, very close. Uh, watching the qualifiers earlier, I thought all the women looked great, and I'm really excited to see how they race this one. Yeah, in our first heat, we're gonna see our top seed, Divya Verma, going up against Meg Freeman. Both of these riders undefeated up to this point. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. And I am going to warn you, Al, I'm very biased towards the Jerry Baker Juniors. I'm a Seattle guy. So expect a lot of Homer energy out of me when Danny Schofield gets up later today. Well, Jerry Baker's Juniors, they got a great crowd out here. And they brought fans. It's even better. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Uh, it's, a, it's a great atmosphere up in uh, Seattle. Uh, I know a lot of these riders have been there, and uh, the Jerry Bakers are juniors are excited to kind of show what they can do here. Yeah, they've been doing well. Make f Sorry, Danielle Scoville getting herself all the way to the semifinals here. All right, and so this is like one of those find the difference tests. <laughs> Might be tough for us here to call. Okay, so 551 Meg Freeman starting from the inside has a black helmet with white letters, whereas Verma on the outside has a gray helmet with black letters. Can you find any other differences, Luke? Not really. So Freeman's front wheel has white decals, Verma's has yellow decals. Of course, a little harder to see those as they start going around. So my money's on the cyclist from Edge Cycling. How about you, Luke? I'd say that's a safe bet right there. I'd All say that's right. a very safe bet. So you're not going to bet against me? I am not. And you got to love when teammates, you know, they meet in the semifinals. Uh, iron sharpens iron. I'm sure they train together, you know, push each other. So it's great to see them here in the semis. We'll also see him in the finals, just which heat? No question. Okay, so Freeman in front of Verma. She had to, she drew the inside position, which is determined by the drawing of the lots. Obliged to lead the first half of the first lap, but then after that, not so much. Verma, the faster qualifier, coming up the track. Freeman's going to hit that 200 meter line first. Verma's now going to use that speed. And Verma's going to take the first ride. Over a second difference between those two in qualifying. So we now move on to heat number two. Annika Flanagan and Danielle Scoville from? Lake Stevens, Washington. Jerry Baker Juniors. All right. Annika Flanagan from Edge Cycling. She hails from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Another Edge Cycling member here. Again, hats off to Edge Cycling to have three uh, competitors in the semifinals of a national sprint. It's pretty special. So hats off to Edge Cycling. And it looks
looks like Flanagan has drawn the inside position in the red of edge cycling. Men will be up next for their semifinal round heat, sorry, rides number one. So only 75 thousandths of a second separating these two riders in qualifying. This is going to be very, very close here. You can see Tactics going to play a huge role. A little bit of cat and mouse right now. They're both kind of eyeing each other. Scoville above the blue. And here we go, one lap to go. Flanagan with a little bit of daylight. She's gonna hit the 200 meter line first. This one's gonna be very, very close. Scoville's gonna try and come up and around. Annika's gonna try and hold her off. Scoville with the longer way to come around, trying to come alongside and can't do it. Flanagan crosses the line first. What a great ride by both riders there. Flanagan, very impressive, holding that line and being able to just hold off Scoville, who's incredibly fast. I just got a message, Al, on my phone. First time anyone's ever said I'm quiet. Apparently, I need to hold the mic closer to my mouth. So, hopefully everyone can hear better now. Okay, who's ready for some more sprinting? All right. Once again, we're going to see our fastest qualifier, Grayson Hawk, of Star Trek Racing out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, racing Danelle Anderson from Detroit, Michigan. Now, Hawk may have been the fastest qualifier, but, but Danell has been dispatching faster qualifiers all the way along the line. Do you think he can do it again, Luke? I'll tell you what, I grew up right across the border from Detroit. Can't sleep on anyone from Detroit, and that velodrome is tough to ride. It's gonna be a little easier here. Should be another great one. So Hawk with the white hand helmet, Anderson with the black helmet. Anderson comes to the front. Two hundred meter track in Detroit. Extremely banked. They do a great job, and I've heard it's a great atmosphere there at the Lexus Velodrome in Detroit. Fantastic program. Been running the Madison National Championships for a number of years there. Both riders starting to pick up the tempo a little bit. Hawk saying right at the rail. Hawk comes over, hits the 200 meter line first. Anderson's going to have to make up ground. And Hawk takes the first victory. What a ride there by Hawk. Just right from the rail, dropping in there, taking the lead out. Props to him. Once again, both of those riders came into that heat undefeated. This is a best of three. Anderson has a chance to send it to a decider and move himself to that gold medal round in the next ride later in the program. Bringing up our second and final heat in the semifinal round of the men's 15 to 18 sprints, ride number one. Luis Bonilla 
of Los Angeles Bicycle Academy out of Long Beach, California, going up against J.C. Pyle, also from Jerry Baker's Jr. Here we go. Kirkland, Washington. And Bonilla drew the inside position. Side by side, two laps to go. And here they go. Pile at the front. Second fastest qualifier. Bonilla was third fastest. This is going to be really close. And looked to me like Pyle got across first. What did it look like it, to you? It looked like JC got it, but that was a little close right there. I'm not exactly sure who. And it was JC. What a race by both both competitors there. I'll tell you this, I've, I've had the privilege of actually racing both those youngsters and they are both very talented on the bike, so no surprise that that one was that close. All right, and we're gonna mix things up here a little bit. We're gonna go to the elimination race. I'm gonna move down the stairs. And I'm gonna be quiet so that no one gets confused on who gets called out. Just a little bit of trivia before we get started. If you lap the field in an elimination race and go to the back, you can be eliminated. Speaking aloud and hanging off the back doesn't help. In case you're
pace and they're rolling up for their neutral lap if they're handsomely bunched. The starter will fire the pistol down to begin the race. The next time around, they'll get a bell. The next time after that, the rider who's rear to their rear wheel across that start finish line last will be identified and eliminated from the race. They'll then go around, there'll be another bell, another elimination, another bell, another elimination. There's the starting gun. Let's see, next time they come around, they'll get a bell. That'll signify that the lap after that will eliminate the first rider. In the final sprint, the rider who's run into their front wheel across the start finish line first is the winner. Five five two home. Five five two home. Five five eight Speranza. Five five eight Speranza. Okay, now we're getting ready for the same race, but with the men in 17 and 18.
Okay, we've got a mechanical issue with one of the riders' bikes. Come back around. So we had a wheel slip there. Back with your positions, riders. Balance rod or foot dessert. Once again, riders are lined up according to their position in the Omnium. This is the third of four races in the Omnium. For our men 17 18, the first two were tested this morning. We had a scratch race and a tempo race. in this race, all the actions at the back.
Five one seven for the win, Aiden Beckman. All right, that concludes the elimination race. Back to you, Luke.
So what do you think of those elimination races there, Luke? I'll tell you, I, I feel for the refs. There's some tight calls there. They did a great job, but what an amazing race that last one was. My goodness. Okay, once again, oops. Once again, I'd like to ask for a big round of applause for our officials making the official call there. So this is ride number two of heat number one of the semifinal round of the women. Verma starting from the inside this time. So, Luke, do you like the, the rider from Edge or the rider from Edge? Uh, I'm going to go with the rider from Edge on this one, Al. I think, I think it would be a safe bet there. So, Freeman took the first ride. Berman needs to win this one to send it to a decider if she wants to go home with gold. Freeman in front, Verma trying to use her speed. Comes over the top. Verma will send it to a decider. Oh, sorry, Verma took both. Sorry about that. We'll see Verma again in the gold medal. In the gold medal ride, we'll see Freeman in the bronze medal ride later this evening. So my notes failed me there. Okay, Flanagan was the winner in the first ride of heat number two. So, Andrew, have you stopped the stream? Or? Yeah. Okay, Travis was saying we're going to stop the stream. We want music. Well, but we had bleed through. You tell me when I can bring the music right now? Okay. Are they sure? Scovilles, starting from the inside position this time, reverse of last time. Okay, Flanagan at the front. <laughs> Flanagan's going to take it in two and meet Verma for gold. Scoville will race Freeman for bronze later in the evening. Very strong race there from Flanagan. Let it out. Really put the pressure on. We'll have an all-edge final.
Okay, we're off to the second ride for the men now. position. What format do you want to use in playlists that we have the rights to set? Um, Good question. I mean, do you have it built on Spotify or anything like that? So Anderson obliged to lead the first part of the first lap since he drew the inside position unless Hawk takes it over. Anderson came to the front early in the last race between these two. Hawk didn't come around until later. Anderson, Hawk, side by side, replay of last time, Hawk yep. coming to the front in the final lap, final part of the final lap. Hawk takes it in two, Anderson will be racing for bronze. Almost a mirror image of the first race there, Hawk used the rail, got over the top and uh, just held on. He looks great and excited to see what he's going to do here in the final. Fastest qualifier. This next match was decided on the first round, correct me if I'm wrong here, by five thousandths of a second. Five thousandths of a second, that's right, Luke. But we're going to be in line for another close one here. Again, both these riders very talented. With a, JC pulls this out, he'll be in the gold medal. If not, we'll go to deciding round three. Those two racers are racing side by side almost that entire final lap. Really came down to just a fraction of a wheel between the two. About a tenth of a second separating these two in qualifying, so it's not a big surprise. We're seeing some close racing. And Bonilla makes a move, Early puts a little move. daylight. Have to close it down. Can he hold it? Bell and one to go. Louis looks very strong. Hits that 200 meter line first. Bonilla still with a lot of daylight between him and Pyle. 
Could have a ride going to a decider here. What a race by Louie. We wouldn't want it any other way. We're going to go to a round three in that matchup. All right, so we're going to get to watch J.C. Pyle and Louis Bonilla race again later in the program. As we now move on to the finals for the women's 500. So, our top eight riders from qualifying this morning, minus one, will be racing for finals. Fastest rider be the new gold medalist and national champion. So we'll be doing these as one-ups, no gate on the back straight. I'll tell you what, Al, I'm excited for this event. This is my favorite event, and we got some great, great racers here tonight. I believe a track record was set earlier today. Um, and a lot of these women just came back from Pan Ams, where they did a phenomenal job. The national team program right now is ripping. They're on their way up. I think that's a shout-out to the culture they've got there. A big shout-out to their head coach and everybody involved, Aaron Hartwell. And to see these ladies here tonight get to kind of perform, like you said, we've already seen a track record. Uh, it's pretty special, so I'm excited. This is the one event tonight that I couldn't wait to watch. Yep, Mandy Marquardt breaking the track record. She is the American record hold and the reigning national champion this event. She'll be going off in Heat 8. Pan Ams, if I remember correctly, the women set an American record there. They did. They did. Got a bronze medal. And like I said, I'm looking forward to see how they're going to continue to succeed because that team's special. Uh, I was able to be around them for a little bit, kind of on the outside, see how hard they're working. And I really think the sky is the limit. So it'll be fun to see the next step here for them at Nationals. Uh, some really, really talented riders. So I'm very excited to watch. Several of them just named to the national, sorry, to the uh, world championships team. So once again, 500 meter time trial, two laps at the velodrome. So Stephanie Lawrence will be setting the times to beat. Twenty-one eight opener. Finishes with a 38-206, 38-206 from Stephanie Lawrence. That'll be the time to beat. What an effort there by Stephanie. You could tell she was working hard the whole way. Like I said, Al, I'm a sucker for the 500 meter. I, it's one of my favorite things to watch because I feel like it's just long enough where you've got to suffer a little bit, but it's also a sprinting event. Uh, great job there by Stephanie.
So in heat number three, rider number 111 is Daniel Morshead, Team 2024 out of Aptos, California. So riders definitely looking for the aerodynamic advantage in these events. And Moorhead's finished with the new best time, new best time, 38.063, 38.063 from Danielle Moorshead. You got to love the strategy here, too. Every rider is obviously different. Uh, Danielle there makes it a little tougher starting in aero bars, but on the second lap there, she's able to make up time, and now she's our leader. Moving on to heat number four now, Mary Wentz, rider number 124. Riding for VeloFem out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Mary Wentz off and underway. Okay. New best time with one lap to go. And Wentz comes to the top of the later board. Emily Hayes up next. Emily Hayes off and underway. New best time, new best time, Emily Hayes, 35-487.
So this is supposed to be copyright free. The USA Cycling just gave it to me. So if you hear it bleed over, it should be okay. It's up to you. I'm just letting you know what's going on. Okay. McKenna McKee on track now. This is heat number six of eight. Top three riders take the top three steps on the podium during our award ceremony. What Fastest opening lap. lap there. Almost by a half second. Gonna put herself on the podium. Three riders to go. New best time, new best time, 34.784. What a phenomenal time by McKenna. Another rider from Washington. Something going on up there. Something going on up in Washington. No doubt about that. Our penultimate rider coming on track now, Keely Ainsley out of Long Beach, California. Eleven nine on the first half. What an absolute blistering start by Keeley. New best time at the 250, 195. Could be looking at new best time. Riding herself onto the podium. Ooh, second fastest so far, 34.799. What a battle we've got going on here. And with Mandy coming up earlier today, just set the track record. It's going to be another extremely fast 500 we're about to watch. That's all right. So you've got your reigning national, so, sorry, you got your American record holder. You got your reigning national champion. You got the track record holder. Give it up for Mandy Marquardt here. She comes up eighth and final heat in the women's 500. and Pan Am medalist.
Third fastest opening half lap. Third fastest opening lap. Ground to make up. Now the fastest so far coming into the finish. Marquardt does it, takes the t best time, 34, 565, your national champion again. What an imp impressive second lap there by Mandy. Had a little bit of time to claw back and she got it back quickly. Congrats to her, national champion. So the first of eight heats for the men. Once again, these will be one-ups. We've got rider number six, Owen Guillaume of Texas Roadhouse Cycling out of Manor, Texas, up first. First of our eight riders off and underway. This will be a four lap, one kilometer time trial for the elite men. Thirty-five, seven eighty-one at the five hundred meters. <laughs> Bell and one to go. Yo, so it's time to be to 107.601. Al, this is such a tough race because you've really got to hang on. You have over a minute of just a firm, firm effort like this. I think that it'll, be, it'll really come down to who can sustain their pace for that last lap. That fourth lap is the key. Who can suffer the most and keep the speed high there because it's very, very, very difficult. You'll see a lot of these guys lying on the infield afterwards because their legs have just been completely blown up. Fun race to watch. As they say, four out of five doctors recommend this for pain. <laughs> no question. Aaron Young on track now. This is heat number two, rider number 64. The shop racing out of Philadelphia, PA. So Young with the second fastest opener, a 
Young finishes second fastest to the rider so far with a 108.059. This is a quick reminder to the under 23s. We are recognizing the winners from earlier today. So in the men's 4K, it's Vigo Moore. In the women's 4K, it's Elizabeth Stevenson. The men's 1K, Sean Esqui. In the women's 500, McKenna McKee. Make sure after the sprint to make your way over to the podiums. That's after the third sprint in the men's junior race. It's coming up after the 1K. So on track now, heat number three, rider number 52, Andrew Weathers out of Houston, Texas. Watt bike is always consistent. It has the same measurements, so you're you're guaranteed to get the same fit every time. Like every time I get on a watt bike, I trust that it's going to be an accurate reading, and like I can really rely on the results. Fastest opener by a second and more. Like you said earlier, Luke, it all depends on how you can bring it home. Andrew looks very strong here. Can he hold the pace is the question, but he looks very, very strong right now. Continuing to put time into the fastest qualifier so far, about a tenth of a second every half a lap. And he does, finishes with a new best time, a 106.095. Andrew Weathers puts Aaron Young on third step of the podium, or the bubble, for the podium as we move on to heat number four to bring Luke Mullis out of Washington, Michigan. What a great ride there by Andrew. Really came out hot and was able to you know, fight that pain. You could see he was really pushing through it there. Incredible ride there by Andrew. Mullis with the second fastest opening lap. Mullis finishes second fastest with the 106.377.
Weather's still fastest in this final. As we bring up heat number five of eight, Corey Jameson, Waterline Racing out of San Diego, California. I'll tell you, Al, Waterline's got a lot of great racers, uh, somewhat of a new team, I believe, and they're really being very impressive across the country this year on the track. So excited to see right now what, they can, what Corey can do. I think he's going to put a show on for us. Got a big gear. Fifth fastest opening lap at 21.3. to go. Finishes third fastest with the 106 and 935. 106 and 935. Al, you mentioned another decision these riders need to have is what gear to use. In a race like this, you sit here and part of it is getting out of the gate what you can push, and then on the back half of it, if you go smaller there, it's a little tougher to keep that high end speed up. So each rider will pick a gear based on their own abilities. It's uh, very intriguing there. It looked like Corey was really pushing a big gear and he was able to claw some of the time back later on in this race. So heat number six of eight on track now, rider number 35, Christopher Murphy of Colorado Springs. Third fastest qualifier this morning. Trying to put himself on the podium. Started out fifth fastest, now fourth fastest, third fastest. Once again, probably rocking a bigger gear, building into it. Second fastest. <laughs> Bell and one to go, still second fastest. Weather's still at the top. Two more riders to come after this. Murphy now putting down new best times. Murphy puts himself on the podium, 105-334, 105-334 for Christopher Murphy. Hats off to Christopher Murphy there. I'll tell you, Al, 
Again, we talk about the differences in gear. You've got to be able to sustain that speed. And as we saw there, he clawed his way back, and now he's sitting on top of the podium with two riders to go. Great, great kilo there. He's got to be happy with that. Coming up next, our penultimate heat rider number seven, David Monoski, ride bikes racing out of Palo Alto, California. Appears to be an issue with the gate, trying to get it to hold the seat post securely. Christopher Murphy is actually one of the top paracyclists in the world. He's a two-time Paralympian, and he just showed us why. I mean, what an absolutely incredible kilo there. It'll be interesting to see how these final two competitors do they can dethrone him, but he'll be on the podium tonight. Dominowski with the second fastest opening lap of 20.2. Fastest time at the 500 with a 34.3. Boy, David looks strong here. He's got to finish it up, but what a ride so far. Our penultimate competitor now setting down new best times coming into the final lap. Puts himself on the podium, a new best time, 103.598, 103.598. What a ride, and he's our only rider right now on the fourth lap to be sub-15, so that uh, is very impressive for him to be able to keep that speed the entire way. What a great ride. So coming on track now, our eighth and final competitor, your reigning national champion in this event, Jamie Alvord of Edge Cycling out of Allentown, Pennsylvania. It's the fastest qualifier this morning. Jamie's an absolute warrior on the bike. I've been able to see this guy train. Works his tail off, Al. It'll be exciting to see what he can do tonight. Second fastest opening lap of the 19.8. 
Now starting to set down new best times with two to go. 33-7 at the 500. He's still got 500 meters to go. Half second lead over Alverd. Sorry, not over Alverd, out of Dominoski. Riding his way to the top step of the podium, Jamie Alvord. And Alvord repeats as national champion 103154. What an incredible ride there, Alice. Second lap was a 13873. I mean, you're moving at that pace right there. Congrats to Jamie, national champion. Dominoski, silver medal, and Christopher Murphy, bronze medalist in the elites. Now we move on to ride number three in the men's 15 to 18 sprint. Get your popcorn ready. We got a big battle coming again. Third time we get to see it tonight. The Decider. Third and final race in heat number two of the semifinal round of the men's 15 to 18 sprint between Luis Bonilla and J.C. Pyle. One win apiece. It'll be very interesting to see what tactics each rider you know, uses here. Uh, we saw a very different race from round one to round two. Both, team, both riders got great coaches probably going back, making suggestions on what they could do better, or what they need to avoid, and it's all going to come down to this. Winner goes on to race for gold against Grayson Hawk. Loser will be racing for bronze against Donnell Anderson. Bonilla in the black helmet has drawn the inside position. Pyle, the blue helmets, and starting from the outside position. Less than two tenths of a second separating these two riders in qualifying. They've each won one ride. Pyle gets it going early. Side by side with Bonilla. They still got another lap to go. They're duking it out now. They're duking it out now. Bonilla hitting the 200 meter line first. Pyle with ground to make up. Pyle starting to bring it in together. It's going to come down to the line. Looked like Bonilla to me. It looked like Bonilla. It's another real close one. All right. And Bonilla takes the final ride. Congrats to Luis Bonilla. What a great ride.
right, and once again for everybody in the house here, we got food and drink up on the concourse. Don't go home hangry. Also, don't forget to pick up your souvenir shirts, hoodies, and ball caps in the entryway to the velodrome. Once again, food and drink up on the concourse. Don't go home hangry. Be sure to tag at Velo Sports Center and at USA Cycling with all of your socials today. Okay, uh, okay, I've been informed we're doing awards now for... We're doing awards for the individual pursuits and the time trials once again. Pursuits and time trial medalists, please head to the podium area. Going to start things off with the men's individual pursuit. So I need Brendan Rim, Spencer Sigabrook, and Anders Johnson in the awards area, please. So again, Rim. Sigabrook and Johnson. got an aerodynamic carbon frame like Van Aert and the same smooth group set as Van Der Poel. The same wheels as Vingegaard and Voss. Cool kit like Carapaz and a courage of Cannonball Cavendish. You got it all, but you haven't got the cotton tires the pros ride until now. medalist Brendan Rim. Now please give your applause for silver medalist Spencer Sigerbrook.
Okay, and now please join me in congratulating first place finisher, gold medalist, and your national champion in the men's elite pursuit, Anders Johnson. Your elite men's pursuit podium. Okay, our next award will be our U23 men's pursuit champion. Please join me in congratulating Viggo Moore. Men's 4K U23 champion, Viggo Moore. Coming up next, podium for the women's elite pursuit final. In third place earning the bronze medal, Bethany Matzik. Coming in second place, earning the silver medal, Danielle Morshead. And in first place, earning the gold medal and your new national champion, give it up for Elizabeth Stevenson. Your elite women's pursuit podium. All right, we're going to ask that Elizabeth Stevenson stay up there because she's also your U23 champion. Jersey upon jersey, medal upon medal. Your, four, your women's U23 pursuit champion. Coming up next are our awards for the elite women's 500 meter time trial. Please give it up for third place finisher and bronze medalist Keely Ainsley. Now please join me in congratulating second place finisher silver medalist McKenna McKee. Now please join me in congratulating first place finisher gold medalist and your 
2023 national champion, Mandy Marquardt. Time trial podium. Okay, and we want McKenna to stick around because she's our U23 500 meter time trial champion. Okay, coming up next, the Elite Men's Kilo Time Trial Podiums. Please give it up for third place finisher bronze medalist Christopher Murphy. Now please join me in congratulating second place finisher and silver medalist David Domanowski. Now please join me in congratulating first place finisher, gold medalist, and repeating as national champion, Jamie Alvord III. Your Elite Men's Kilo Time Trial Podium. Okay, our next award is going to be for the Men's 1K U23 Champion, Sean Escui. Your U23 kilometer time trial champion. Gonna do some quick interviews here on the infield with our new national champions. Over to you, Luke.
All right, well, I'm here with Anders right now. And so you just won a national champion, got the elusive jersey, and a 415. But my question is, on a race like that, what's going through your head in those last two laps? Yeah, it's mostly, like, just wondering if you can hold on. i um, pretty excited when I was doing those splits, and the legs were feeling pretty good. So I knew it was going to kind of come together, and I was just really happy how it turned out. A um, lot faster than I expected to go, for sure. A lot faster than you expected. So is there an adrenaline rush when you hear your coach calling those times out and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm feeling pretty good. I, you know, lungs feel good, legs feel even better? Uh, yeah, kind of. Lungs are feeling pretty good, legs, I don't know about better. But I was getting, getting to the finish. I'm going to jump in the photo. Yeah, I'm taking you from the photo. Congratulations. Okay, so now we're here with Liz, double champ, under 23 and elite. Congratulations. How's it feel to be the double national champion? I don't know. I think it's really cool. Um, thank you for all the support from everyone here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now I've got to ask. I'm originally from Windsor, Ontario, a little bit very close to Detroit, Michigan. What is it like to be able to represent that velodrome? And you said you also split time training. So talk to me about the two places you train from. Um, so I train in, uh, right now, Indy. Uh, that's where I go to school at Marion University. And then um, during the winter, I sometimes go to Lexus and train there. And do, does riding, I've heard a lot of things with the Lexus Velodrome. Does riding that track, which I heard is pretty intense, it's very short, help you on a day like today? Or is it just a little bit different? Yeah, for sure. It definitely helps me. Um, it's a shorter track. Like, it's a little bit more technical. Um, it's great for riding Madisons and just getting more uh, skill. Well, I know everyone here was pretty impressed by all your rides today, and congratulations on being a double champ. Thank you so much. Okay, now here we go with the good stuff. We've got the power couple here, two national champions, Mandy with a track record today, and you have the American record. Jamie, we'll get to you in a sec. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, stay right here. Mandy, we'll start with you. How do you feel? I mean, what a great day. It was a great day, and getting to this, do this alongside my husband and edge cycling and representing Team Nova Norris means the world, and getting to have, you know, this awesome facility here as we prepare for the world championships is huge, you know, to have USA Cycling, the sprint program based out of here, have all the support in the facility. It's been amazing, and it's been so instrumental to our success. I've been able to see this women's program kind of from the outside, and you nailed it. I said it earlier. Uh, Coach Aaron Hartwell is doing a great job, and to see you ladies tonight rip it up, healthy competition. All I can say is congrats, Mandy. What a great day. And it was really fun, especially that last lap, watching you just absolutely rip. So congrats on your national championship, and congrats on your track record. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun, and congrats also to my teammates. And um, now on to my husband. On to Jamie. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to top that. <laughs> okay, Jay, I'm going to ask you more mental questions then. So talk to me there about what your mentality is going in. You, were the, you had the best qualifying time. You're sitting in the gate. It's clicking down. National title on the line. What's going through your head? Yeah, I'm, I'm out there just uh, trying to be the best version of myself and uh, send it 100% so that when I'm done the efforts, you know, I know that I left it all out on the track. I love that. I sent it, and you sent it 100%. You got the beautiful Stars and Stripes jersey. Um, anything, you know, when you look back on this day today that you're really going to remember, obviously, both of you winning a national title. But what's been your favorite moment today? Yeah, uh, defending my title alongside of my wife. And uh, I know that some of my teammates are out there defending titles also. That's sick. Congrats to both of you. Again, a lot of fun watching. Uh, incredibly fast, incredible riders. And best of luck in the future. I know everybody in the States will be supporting both of you. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, everybody, for coming out and supporting us.
Okay, so it looks like we're going back to racing now. We're going to get things started with the finals, the women's 15 to 18 sprint. We're going to start things off with ride number one, the heat for bronze between Danielle Scoville and Meg Freeman. We're here with Sean Asqui, our under-23 national champ. What does it feel like to put that jersey on right now? I think it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, this is uh, my first time out here, and to win a national championship for the U-23 kilo is uh, pretty special. Again, we all talk about the kilo being such a tough mental race. I'd love to hear the mentality. Last lap, you're probably trying to fight for dear life. What's going on in your head? I think uh, the first thing is, you know, go hard and then go hard and go harder even more. So uh, it's a pretty unique race. I mean, four laps as hard as you can go. I'm used to racing at Major Taylor, so it's only three laps there. But uh, it's a, a longer track there, so got to get used to the four laps and go hard. You went hard and you got a national title. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. <laughs> All right. So Danielle Scoville of Jerry Baker Jr.'s drew the inside position right in at the front right now in the first lap of three in the first ride for bronze the women's 15 to 18 sprint her opponent Meg Freeman of Edge Cycling Scoville of Jerry Baker's was the second fastest qualifier but was dispatched in the semis Freeman in front, Scoville behind, coming up on the bell lap. Freeman hits that 200 meter line first. Scoville, the faster qualifier, trying to make it up on the outside. She's gonna have the longer way to come around through the turn. Side by side racing as they come down to the home straight here. It's going to be Scoville crossing the line first. Great ride from both of these women. We'll see them again later this evening as we get ready to bring up the first ride of the heat for gold and silver. We've got another under-23 national champion. Congratulations. You said this is your first track race. You're more roadie. First track race in five months. Were there a little nerves involved with that? Tell me how you're going into it, especially in a tough race like a 4K that it seems like you're out there forever. What's going through your head there? Well, surprisingly, not much. I'm just fo focused on trying to hold the line and trying to hold pace. But, yeah, it was a fun race. Good to be doing the IP since... Yeah, since practicing in like February and March, and yeah, kind of, kind of aiming for a podium for elite. But I mean, great job to the other guys that are flying today. So yeah, and we talk about the road. You've been riding for Premier Tech to come out here, snag a national jersey for the under 23s. Um, it's not easy. Everyone says going from road to track, there is a difference. Congratulations to you. I know your future's bright. Everybody here is excited to see where you take this thing, and congrats on the national championship. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks for, thanks for having this event in Los Angeles. It's been good. Okay, getting ready for the first ride in the heat for gold and silver. Flanagan drew the inside position. Flanagan with the white shoes. Verma with the red shoes. Okay, and in our last race, Meg Freeman 
Rider 551 was giving a, given a warning for entering the lane when the opponent was already there. Once again, a warning has been issued to Rider 551, Meg Freeman, in the last heat. Flanagan in front, Verma behind. Verma, the faster qualifier. Flanagan hits the 200 meter line first. Verma just powering in the saddle, comes up over the top and takes the first ride. All right, now we've got another under 23 national champion, McKenna McKee down here. So McKenna, you got silver today on the elite. You're a national champ under 23. What a great evening for you. How does that make you feel? It feels really good, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm just really proud of myself. And I'm happy that my coach from Portland could make it out. I haven't seen him in a really long time because I've been out here training with uh, USA Cycling. So it's been, it's been really good, special night. You also went and to the uh, Pan American Games. You've been all over the globe with Team USA in that program. Talk to me about what it's like. You mentioned off mic how nice it is to be home riding in front of, you know, your fans and being at this facility. Yeah, it's, it's been really awesome to see, you know, so many people here tonight. And racing around the world has been really fun, but nothing beats, you know, racing for a home crowd. And it's just amazing to be here and have my family and just the support means everything. I love that. And congratulations. The jersey looks great. You're under 23 champ, McKenna McKee. Thank you so much, Luke, and thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Okay, and there's been a correction on, the, on that warning. It's against Scoville 553. Scoville gets a warning for entering the lane when it was already occupied. Anderson with the purple sleeves and the black helmet is drawn the inside position. He's racing J.C. Pyle of Jerry Baker Juniors. Pyle, the second fastest qualifier, dispatched to the bronze medal ride. Anderson, the fifth fastest, battled his way into this bronze medal ride. Anderson at the front. Going to hit that 200 meter line first. Pyle with the longer way to come around. Anderson crosses the line first, takes the first ride.
Okay, so Hawk has drawn the inside position. He's got the white helmet. Bonilla in the outside position with the black helmet. Hawk in front, Bonilla behind. Hawk, the fastest qualifier, trying to use his speed. Bonilla coming up alongside. He's closing it in, and Bonilla gets across the line first. That's racing. That completes Ride number one in the final round. We're now going to move on to the points race in the women's 17 to 18 Omnium. This is their fourth and final race in that Omnium. Reagan Patishal currently leading it with 120 points over Claire Kublata with 114. Lucy Speranza sits on 108. Lee Holslander has 100. Hannah Holm with 98. The points in the sprints will add towards the overall point total. So once again, Patishal coming into the points race with a six point lead over Kudlata, who then has a six point lead over Speranza with 108. In a points race, points are awarded 5, 3, 2, and 1 on the intermediate sprints. Final sprints 10, 6, 4, and 2. Riders that lap the field gain 20 points. So they're rolling out for their neutral lap if they're handling bunch and they'll come around the starter and fire the pistol. That'll signify the start of racing. 60 lap sprints every 10. Al, this is a completely different atmosphere now for this race. 60 laps, they got a long time out here. Every sprint point, like you mentioned earlier, gets added to the total. This is a wide open race in my opinion. It's gonna be really fun to see the tactics that these ladies uh, use tonight. That's right. Two-point bonus for every first-place finish, so you pick up three of those, you could get rid of a six-point deficit really quick. And let us not forget the final sprint where the points are doubled, 10, 6, 4, and 2. You could pick up a four-point differential just right there. So just like you said, Luke, a very close race coming into this final. Anyone could ride away national champion.
And with 60 laps, you've really got to gauge your effort. You don't want to just go nuts on the first sprint and then happen to fall behind for later on. Again, there's a lot of tactics out here. It's going to be very, very tough physically, a lot of endurance involved, but you also got to be sharp. So it's going to be a great, great race to watch from a tactical standpoint as well as an endurance one. Seven laps to go until the first sprint. There'll be a bell before every sprint. Let us know that we got 250 meters before five, three, two, and one will be awarded on those intermediate sprints. It'll be interesting to see if a rider takes a flyer and it looks like one's Trying to get off the front now. I believe that's Patashall. I confirm 557, your leader coming in, Patashall, maybe trying to take a lap. Be interesting to see if Speranza tries to chase her down and bring Kulata up or not. Four laps, one kilometer to go. It's about a quarter of a lap lead for Patashal right now. The riders seem content leaving Patashal up off the front. We've got two chase groups kind of split two and two. Not too much of a sense of urgency right now with 52 laps to go. 500 meters to go for the first set of points. Patashal setting yourself up well for the big five. And once again, if Patashal takes the lap, she gets 20 points. There's the bell for Patashal. Kudlata and Speranza on their bell lap now. Patashal picked up the five. Kudlata the three, Speranza the two. Only one more point to come from either Hunslander or Holm. Who's going to pick up the final point? It's going to be 552. That's Holm. Badishaw halfway to getting the lap and 20 points. Forty-seven laps to go. Here comes the leader on the track, Reagan Pashal of Edge Cycling. What an effort from rider five five seven Pashal. I mean, she's been out there by herself for the majority of this race, still rumbling, trying to catch the next group. That is not easy. Working solo, riders in the draft do thirty percent less work than riders out in the wind. And she is all out in the wind all by herself. Okay, I'm seeing. Okay, and so they've given Patashal, Kudlata, and Speranza all a lap.
Doesn't change the difference between those three riders in points, just moves them all up 20 points with respect to Hunslander, Hulslander, and Holm. Four laps, one kilometer to go for the field. Patishal still up half a lap on the field. Two laps, 500 meters to go for points for the field, and one lap to go for our leader. Five points goes to Patachon. And Kudlada once again taking the three, Speranza the two. Two of six sprints completed. The way it stands now, Patashal is really padding her lead for the goal, but we might have a, a race here for silver and bronze. There's an eight point gap right now, but uh, both riders are riding together, trading off pulls. If uh, a lot of race left, 38 laps, they can both hang on. It might stay the same, but we'll see. That's the matchup I'm looking at now. Definitely the closest race. You got Patashal off the front with 10 points over Kudlata. Still four sprints to go. Patashal's in a great place right now because she's got a 10 point lead and she's over half a track you know, above the second and third place riders. So she can really just sit in that pocket and, and grind this thing out. Again, another 36 laps, but she's certainly putting in a heck of an effort right now. Very impressive to watch. Yep, picking up an extra two point bonus over second place who only picks up three points. She picks up five every sprint. Second place only picking up three. Just building that lead. Only about a quarter lap to get 20 points on those riders. That would be an insurmountable lead. Patashal now on the same straight as Kudlata and Speranza. She can see him, giving her something to chase. Eight kilometers remaining in the race for the field. One lap to go for another five points for Patashal.
Patshaw gets the big five. This is for the second place sprint here on this on this point sprint. Ooh, and it looks like it's gonna be Speranza over Kudlata this time. Speranza claws one point back there now to shrink the gap to seven. Patashal still a quarter lap behind Kudlata and Speranza. Yeah, again, I, I know I keep saying this, but you got to give props to Patashal. It is not easy riding this long in the wind. Everybody else has had at least a little bit of some shelter here and there, a little bit of a draft, and Patashal just keeps rumbling, so hats off to her. And that suits the deal for Pattershaw. Another, another 20 points. That takes her to 175 over second place, 142. But like you said, Luke, looks like the race is for second and third between Culotta and Speranza. Only a seven point distance and difference and three sprints to go. Three sprints, and the second one, as we mentioned, being or the last one being were double. Plus, at this point of the race, I mean, there's 25 laps to go. A lot can happen. A 60-lap race like this, I'm telling you, you're breathing hard. Your heart rate's through the roof. It's very, very challenging. So that seven points can disappear or grow very quickly. Six kilometers remaining in the race, but more importantly, one kilometer to go until the anti-penultimate sprint. Pashal back at the front, likes it in the wind, I guess. I just want to give a quick shout out to Hannah and Leah who are still rumbling back there, doing a great job with a great effort for them two right now. You got to love that. That's true grit right there. They're rumbling and they're going to finish this thing off strong. Once again, folks, we got food and drink up on the concourse. Men's Omnium, please find your way to bike check. Men's Omnium, please find your way to bike check. Now we're going to have a three-way, three-up sprint. Patashal opening a gap. Patashal picks the five, Kudlata the three, Speranza the two. Kudlata gains another point back from the last one. She's now back up eight with two sprints to go. So your point totals with four of six sprints completed. Rider number 557, Patashaw with 180. Rider 561, Kudlata with 145. And third place, 558, Speranza with 137.
one kilometer to go until the penultimate sprint. Coming into the last lap here for the fifth sprint. Looks like Patishal is going to lead this one out again. And the battle for third is once again upon us. Patishal picks up another five, and it's going to be Kudlata picking up the three. Widening the gap with Speranza. Looked to me like Hoslander got in there for the final point. We'll find out here momentarily. Two K to go, eight laps remaining. How about a round of applause for these five juniors? I'll tell you, it's not easy when you have a small field like this in a long race. There's really nowhere to hide. 60 laps, we're down to the final seven. All five of them, what a great effort here. It looks like our standings are pretty set when it comes to one, two, three. Got a little battle for fourth and fifth going on. One point separates them right now. But again, hats off to these five juniors because this is not an easy task. Yep, and in that penultimate sprint, Hulslander getting her first point of the race. Digging deep. About a mile away from the finish of the race, it is double points in the final sprint, 10, 6, 4, and 2. Leah closes the gap, getting ready with five to go. Like I said, the, the points now, the big race will be between fourth and fifth. Hannah and Leah right now separated by one point. Groups together. Should be a lot of fun to see how these two race. Group all together with three laps to go. Padishal at the front. Two laps to go, 500 meters remaining. Adeshaw comes to the front, starts opening a gap, one to go. Kudlata on Speranza's wheel.
Holman Holslander. Patishaw wins it. Kudlata secures second place. Speranza third. And Holslander gets the final two points. A lot of great battles throughout that 60 laps. That was a lot of fun to watch. And again, hats off to the five juniors there. Very, very entertaining. And that's just so physically demanding, Al, to sit there, 60 laps. Again, not anywhere to hide when you have a small field like this. What a, a great race there by all five competitors. Yeah. Props to Jerry Baker Juniors. Moving up from fifth to fourth place with that final sprint. But it's Reagan Patishall Edge Cycling, your new national champion for the women's 17-18 Omnium. That's a nice day at the office right there for Patishall. You win every sprint and get 10 on the six. Can't do much better than that. Can't do better than that. All right, so we'll get the women off the track and we got the men coming up next. Jonah Hover currently tied with Alejandro Che. So we're coming into this final with our top two riders exactly tied on points with 114 apiece. Fetzer in third place with 108 and Aiden Beckman right there knocking on the door with 100. They'll be doing an eight sprint, 80 lap, 20 kilometer points race. This one's about to get spicy, I'll tell you right now. There's a lot of juniors in here that can win this bad boy. I mean, our top two people are tied. Six points back is third, and 14 is fourth. With the amount of sprints here, the double points in the last sprint, and 80 laps, it's going to be a mental battle, physical battle, and tactical. I'm kind of excited for this one. See a little bit of nerves maybe from some of the riders. They're about to suffer a little bit. This one will be a lot of fun. And we're off, 80 to go to decide the men's junior 18, 17 to 18 national championship. This one's gonna have a lot of fireworks in it. I'm pretty amped, here we go. Got a rider off the front already. 79 laps to go. 509, Sebastian Beck. Al Keck. About 28 miles an hour in the early going.
1K outside the first of eight sprints. It'll be interesting to see which riders go for this first sprint. With standings just tight, you obviously want them, but you've got eight of them, and you don't want to use too much energy. So, again, we'll be able to see these riders' strategy, tactics, and how it all plays out here early. Five oh nine back at the front again, off the front ever so slightly. Now falling back. Everyone marking the leaders, playing follow the leader up the track with two laps, five hundred meters to go to points. Things starting to rearrange themselves as we come into the bell lap. Everybody getting into position. They're coming out of the turn four and five wide. So usual suspects at the front, Che and Hover. 514 getting in there as well. That's Fetzer. Fetzer's gonna keep going here, keep the tempo up, put the pressure on. Over and Shea, right there together. So it was Che picking up five, Hover picking up three, Fetzer picking up two, and Karsten Baker of Velo Track Cycling with one point. Everyone else still with their original point totals. So now it's a two point lead to Che over Hover, seven points to Fetzer, 10 points to Beckman. Once again, Che wearing 5.22, Hover 5.12 in the red edge cycling, Fetzer 5.14 in blue. Back at the front again, 66 laps to go. Looks like Baker off the front. Four laps, one kilometer to go for points. Yep, Karsten Baker off the front of the field. No concerted chase coming. No concerted chase coming. Karsten's got a nice arrow position right now. Let's see if he can hang in there for a few more laps. Looking at three laps, 750 meters to go for points. Maybe with an eighth of a lap ahead of him, ahead of the field. Five hundred meters. Karsten still with a little bit more than an eighth of a lap. There's the bell, can Karsten Baker hang on to it? Field starting to heat up, Fats are coming to the front, just like he did last time. And they are flying. It's gonna be Fetzer, Baker, and 520, it looked like to me. That's a big five points for Luke Fetzer. That really tightens this whole race up. And now we're seeing Jonah launch a little attack after the sprint. Let's see if they can stick something here. Fetzer doing his best to chase this thing down as he knows he's got to. 
Yep, he closed it right up. Yes, he did. This top three just got very, very tight. A lot of, lot of racing to go. What an effort by Luke Fetzer there. It's going to be very, very close here. Five points between first and third. So in that last sprint, Fetzer picked up five. Baker picked up three. Lee picked up two. And Che picked up one. Hover, none. And now Che leads with three points over Hover with 117. Fetzer, two points behind. So like you said... Luke, it's getting very tight at the top. Aiden Beckman watching the top three right away. No points yet with the 100 he brought in. Rider 509, Sebastian, is in a lot of work. He's really trying to push the tempo. you got to respect it. He's got... Jerry Baker Jr., David Magnuson on his wheel right now. They're trying to really set this tempo so it's not just a sprinter's race. They want to really bring this endurance into it. The field is able to keep it close, but mad respect to these two right now. Middle of the race, and they're still trying to up the tempo. you got to love it. Yep, back in Beck and Magnuson off the front with a kilometer to go until the next set of points. Still only two sprints in out of eight. A lot of racing ahead. This is what gets interesting, Al. You see the field right now. You've got the three leaders, one, two, three, right at the top of the rail. And who's going to be the guy to bridge the gap? Looks like Hover's going to start it here. There's obviously three laps for the next points. But the tactics play in here. And that breakaway group can stick it if nobody, none of the big three want to chase this. It'll be very interesting to see who decides to do the work here. And it looks like we got our volunteer here coming around. Out yes, of we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Two laps, 500 meters to go, and it's 516 looking to bridge. That's Alford. And no one chased that either. So, again, in the top three, one of those guys, if they want to get up there, is going to have to really put this work in. You see Aiden right now from CFC, who's a tremendous rider, also pulling a little bit. Can they bridge this gap? Alfred showing the field a clean set of wheels on the bell lap. Beckman's got to be nervous, and he is. He's up there at the front. Alfred picks up five. Che and Fetzer pick up three and two. Okay, hey, Hover getting animated here, 48 laps to go. This is a big move here, and you see the rider 522 Che also trying to close this down. They do not want to let Hover get up the track like this, especially with a couple riders up there. That's right. So in that last sprint, it was Alfred picking up five, Che two, three, Pet Fetzer two, and Magnuson one. The Jerry Baker Jr. coming in with a quick point there. Five-point gap now between Che and Hover. Hover and Fetzer now tied with 117 apiece. Che still trying to get up to that lead group of four. Taking Fetzer with him. That's a great job by Che to get back up there. He's going to hang on one of these wheels now, probably catch his breath and get ready for a sprint in five laps. Trying to defend his five-point lead right now. The field has somewhat been blown apart, but it might come back together. You've got two chase riders that are still on it. Yep, here comes the field through the home straight right now. 44 laps to go, 11 kilometers remaining in the race, but more importantly, four laps and one kilometer until the next sprint, the halfway point, 40 laps in, 40 laps to go. If 
field now collecting its breath. Three laps, 750 meters to go for points. At this point, you've done four races in the Somnium. Everybody is tired, everybody is winded. It's a matter of who has that just extra gear, both mentally and physically, to kind of push through. They have 43 laps left, and this thing is wide open, especially the podium. But really across the board here, as far as placing goes, it's very, very tight. A lot can happen here. I believe that might be Alford drawing first blood here as they come into the bell lap. Alford going again, and they're not letting him go this time. He got the five on the last sprint. He's still rumbling. They've got to figure out a way to get around him here. 5.16, Connell Alford, and it's Fetzer. Fetzer leading the charge with Hover and Che on his wheel. And it's going to be Fetzer. Ooh, I think Che got over Hover, and I believe that's Beckman getting in there for the last point. What an effort there by Luke Fetzer to pick up the five, tighten this thing up between first and second, he really led that out, and he's still rumbling right now. What an effort. Might be moving Hover to the edge of the podium there. Yep, Fetzer picked up the big five, and Che came over the top for the three. Hover did get in there for two, and I was right. Aiden Beckman picked up one. But right now, Che leading it with 126 points over Fetzer's 122, and Hover now sitting on third with 119. I'll tell you, Al, my adrenaline's going just watching right now. This is a fun race. A lot can happen in these last four sprints. Uh, it's getting spicy. It's sl speeding up, slowing down. The points are tight. We got, we're in for a, uh, a good one here. 37 laps to go. A lot of good racing to kick things off here in the first of five nights at these elite Junior and Para Track National Championships. Nine kilometers remaining in the race, a little less than a mile to go until the next sprint. Four laps and one kilometer to go till the next sprint. Back off the front. Three laps, 750 meters to go. No chase coming from the field. They're all busy watching each other. Beck currently sitting in 11th position with 60 points. Field not worried about him. Eight kilometers to go in the race, 500 meters to go for points. And there's the bell, Hover at the front, Che on his wheel, Beckman right there, and here comes Fetzer. And Che over Hover over Fetzer with Beckman picking up the spare. That's a big five points from Che right there to pad his lead. He had a four-point lead going into that to win that sprint. That's a very big five points for Che, and now we're seeing... Hover and Luke Fetzer trying to keep that tempo up, see how much Chase got in his legs, and he looks fine at the moment. So. 
Hover gaining another point over Fetzer. So with five sprints completed, Chase sits on 131, Fetzer with 124, Hover with 122, Beckman at 102. So really, Che with a seven-point lead over Fetzer and only two points separating Fetzer and Hover. We got a flyer, 503, Jerry Baker Ryder, Magnuson. He's quite the rider up at Jerry Baker. He's done this quite a bit. He's got great endurance. I've seen it firsthand. So here he goes. He's going to try and hold his field off for another six laps and get some points here. Over at the front of the field doing the big work there. Bring it, bring Magnuson back into the fold. Looks like Alfred going for it. Big boys watching each other. Alfred now off the front. Quarter lap, Alfred with a quarter lap, six kilometers to go. How about the ride from Alfred today, tonight? He's done a lot of work, he's got a couple flyers and he still looks strong, 23 to go. What an impressive ride thus far. Five hundred meters to go for Alfred. Going one to go, Alfred off the front. Here comes Fetzer with Che. Where's Hover? Alfred will pick up the five. Fetzer the three, Che the two, and 520, I think that's Lee, picks up the one. Yep, Jaden Lee. Over now, coming off the back of the field. So Fetzer and Che about a quarter lap up on Hover with Alfred with them. That five points puts Alfred into fourth place. Still quite a ways back from third, but you never know here how things will play out. Okay, Odin Thordenson off the front now with that group. So Che leading 133 to Fetzer's 127, five point difference. Fetzer five points over Hover. Connell Alford with 106, two sprints to go. How about this effort? I mean, you're an 80 lap race, you got 16 to go and you got a three man breakaway and they're really pushing the tempo. Right now you got the first, second, and fourth riders of the overall Omnium in this break, and they're going for it. And you got, got Hover coming off the back. Fourteen laps. Only about a quarter of a lap off the front for that lead group of three. Things are about to get very interesting in the front here with Che losing the wheel. Now the group is two. Fetzer and Alford. Oh, 
Fetzer is six down, so we need some help from the field here. This will be very, very interesting. There's still two sprints to go, and the last sprint is worth double points. Over a half lap down now. Three kilometers remaining in the race, 500 meters to go for points. The field is still working. They're not going slow. This will be very interesting. This will be a heck of an effort from these top two riders if they can do these last 11 laps. Chase dropping back into the field. Definitely everything you said, Luke, about endurance playing out in a long race like this. Chase being very smart, though. He's going to sit back in the field, catch his breath, and I, I guarantee you he's going to try and snag a couple points still. Fetzer picking up the big five, Alfred the three. And then Jerry Baker and Jaden Lee picking up another point. Jaden Lee. Fetzer and Alford now passing Hover. We have a one point gap right now between first and second place for the national champion. And eight laps remaining in the race. Double points in the final sprint. Che a half lap down on Fetzer. Fetzer could be dry riding himself into a national championship here. He's a mile away. Luke Fetzer of Hot Tubes. Luke Fetzer looks strong right now, six to go. He's on it, he's determined. At this point, the national championship is his to lose. Chase, still your leader, but only by one point, and he's a half lap down on Fetzer. Four point bonus. In that final sprint. And don't believe Hover can work with those as he's off the back. Four laps, one killer meter to go. Alfred and Fetzer off the front. They won't be able to catch the field, but they're definitely going to take the bulk of the points. Two laps to go. Even if Fetzer gets second in the upcoming sprint, if Che gets shut out, that's it. Fetzer will be your national champion. But Fetzer's really strong. How about this ride from Luke Fetzer? Luke Fetzer picks up the Big champion. Ten. Alford, six. Here comes the sprint for four. It's going to be Che with Be Beckman right there, picking up the final two. I think he survived. Just waiting for the point totals to come up here, and we've got it. Luke Fetzer, first place, your national champion with 142 points. Second place, Alejandro Che with 137. Jonah Hover holds on for third with 122. What an incredible race. Hats off to all the riders. That was very entertaining.
Okay, we're going to have ride number two of the sprints, then we're going to have the awards, the awards for, for the Omniums. Al, how about the ride there from Connell Alford? I mean, did a lot of, took a lot of flyers, got a lot of points there. If, I'm, if my math is correct here, he scored 19 points overall, bumped himself back up to fourth place, seven away from a podium. Hats off to Alford, rider number 516. That was a very, very impressive race to me. Yep, did a lot of work throughout the race, was able to stay strong all the way to the end. And the national champ, Luke Fetzer, is the only guy in this race that scored a point in all eight sprints, including getting 10 on the last race. Did not miss one sprint. Again, you talk about endurance, you talk about power. That's very, very impressive to me. Wasn't like, hey, I got in a breakaway and was able to do this. He was in, he was out. A couple first place, obviously finished it strong, was able to bridge some gaps, race smart. Congratulations to Luke again. Uh, on his national title there. What a great race by him. Yep, that's the way to win a points race consistency throughout. Coming up next, the ride number two in the final round of the women's sprint. First, the heat for bronze between Danielle Scoville and Meg Freeman. All right, last thing I'll say here, Al, about that race, just because I'm excited how close it was. I also got to get tip my hat to Alejandro Che. I mean, 78 sprints, he was doing a ton of work. He got caught there having to bridge a huge gap. I mean, what an incredible rider. Again, the future's so bright for all these riders, but hats off to Alejandro, silver medalist in the Omnium. I mean, looks strong in every event. What a great ride from him as well. He should be very proud of that. Got a bronze medal on the line here. Yep, Scoville can win this one. She goes home with the bronze. If Freeman wins it, sends it to a decider later in the program. Put, gives herself a chance at the bronze medal. Tempo's picking up here with two to go. Scoville, the faster of the two qualifiers. Freeman now coming to the front. Freeman wants to lead this thing out. Scoville's gonna get right on the wheel here. We've got one to go for a bronze medal, potentially. Freeman gonna occupy that pole, make Scoville work for it, have to come around the long way, the longer distance. Side by side, coming through the turn, heading for home. Scoville on the outside, Freeman on the inside. Scoville takes it in two. Danny Scoville will be your bronze medal winner. I've been waiting to say this, so congratulations to the Jerry Baker Juniors on that one.
Coming up on ride number two in the final for gold and silver between Divya Verma and Annika Flanagan. If you're wondering who's who, Verma's got the red shoes and Flanagan the white shoes. Sorry, correction, Verma, yeah, Verma in the red shoes, Flanagan in the white shoes. Verma at the front, gets into that power crouch. Looks like Verma's gonna be your national champion here. What a strong ride from start to finish. Silver medal for Flanagan. And again, what a program they've got going at Edge Cycling there in Pennsylvania to have a gold and silver medalist and a four place in the women's junior sprint. Tremendous job to that whole organization. Yeah, especially with the weather this year, fluky weather all winter, and then smoke closing the track with, from fires from Canada. Somehow they made it work, none the same. Next event will be the second ride in the final round of the sprints for men. Going to start things off with the ride for bronze between Danelle Anderson and J.C. Pyle. Can't remember what track Pyle's from. Can you, Luke? I think I can remember. Up there at uh, Jerry Baker Jr., he's got his work cut out for him here. He's going to try and force a third match here. Anderson going to try and win this bronze medal. It was close the first time. Six hundredths of a second. I got a feeling we're in for another close one here. Anderson coming to the front again, as he likes to do. Anderson looks very content to lead this thing out. JC riding very close to the rail now. He's going to use this whole bank when this acceleration comes. JC starting to rev it up from the rail, and Anderson responds. Here we go.
Anderson takes control of that sprinter's lane, hits that 200-meter line first. Pyle's going to have the longer way to come around. Could this be a replay of the last ride coming down to the line? Anderson takes it in two. Anderson will be your bronze medal winner. Great ride there from both riders, very fast. And a hat tip to Donnell Anderson, qualified fifth, dispatched riders left and right all the way up into the bronze medal ride. We're giving a lot of Jerry Baker love tonight. I gotta give some love for the Lexus Velodrome there in Detroit, Michigan. I might have grown up about five minutes outside of Detroit, so I, I got a soft spot for Detroit as well. This is another great program there. We're in for another treat here. Gold medal on the line. Rider 409, Luis Bonilla won the first one. It was a very close race. I got a feeling that this one will be very, very tight again. Yep, Bonilla on the inside, third fastest qualifier here racing for gold with one win to his name already. Grayson Hawk came in as the top qualifier. Not flying 200 meters. Like you said, Luke, in the last race, it was less than six one hundredths of a second separating the two. Grayson gets to the front here early. He wants to lead this thing out, it looks like. And that's how Bonilla won it last time, so... Hopefully it plays out a little differently. 999 laps to go. <laughs> and here they go. And there's the bell. Hawk going to lead out Bonilla. It's going to be a drag race here. It's going to be close. Hawk with a little bit more of an advantage this time coming to the line. And Hawk and takes the second one. Hawk takes the second one. We're going to a third race for a national title. It doesn't get much better than that. Great race by both riders there. Hats off to Grayson. I mean, he led that thing out. And he was hammering. You got to love that. Everybody likes when people can rip their bike like that. What a great race. All right. So in order to give those gentlemen some... Time to recover. We're going to do the Omnium Awards now. So we need our me women and men's 1718 Omnium winners to the podium area. Need Reagan Padishaw, Claire Kudlata, Lucy Speranza, Luke Fetzer, Alejandro Che, and Jonah Hover to the awards area. Once again, it's award time. So we need Reagan Padishaw, Claire Kudlata, Lucy Speranza, Luke Fetzer, Alejandro Che, and Jonah Hover. Please come to the awards area now.
Please join me in congratulating third place finisher and bronze medalist Lucy Speranza in the women's 17-18 Omnium. Now please join me in congratulating second place finisher and silver medalist Clara Kudlata out of Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. Now please join me in congratulating first place finisher and gold medalist Reagan Patishall of Brunningsville, Pennsylvania. Your 1718 Women's Omnium Podium. Okay, please join me in congratulating third place finisher in the men's 1718 Omnium, Jonah Hover of Allentown, PA. Oops, thought he was here. Now please join me in congratulating second place finisher and silver medalist Alejandro Che of Torrance, California. Now please join me in congratulating first place finisher gold medalist and your national champion for the men's 1718 Omnium, Luke Fetzer of Laguna Beach, California. Your men's 1718 Omnium Podium. Okay, down to you, Luke, you are the interview with our new national champions in the International Omnium for 1718. All right, I'm here with Reagan Patishall. First off, Tremendous racing. It was a lot of fun. I mean, you put a ton of effort in there. Congratulations. I know you said no questions. I'll keep an easy softball for you. How does it feel to be a national champion? Uh, it's super exciting. It's always fun racing. It's great. I love it. And then the last thing I'll ask you is, at what point during that race did you, kind of, you were in control from start to finish? Did you kind of know, like, hey, is it a pinch me moment? I'm going to be a national champion right now. Or did you, did you kind of know early? Is there anything going through your head as you're riding that? Anything can happen in a race. You really didn't know till the end. 
It's a modest answer. Well, again, congratulations on the jersey, on the medal, and great racing. Everyone here was really impressed by you. Thank you so much. Luke, great name. First and foremost, great name. I mean, that was a tremendous race. I don't know if you could hear us in the crowd, everybody, very entertaining. First and foremost, congratulations. You got points in every sprint. You won the last one. I mean, tell me how you're feeling right now. You're national champ. Oh, man, it feels great. I mean, uh, to be two-time national champ, I, uh, I came here last year, and I just got podium after podium, and to win, it feels really good. I mean, it was tight. You were down a little bit. You had to bridge a couple gaps. You won a few sprints. Is there ever moments in these races where you're like, hey, I'm struggling a little bit, or do you just have that mental strength where you just believe in yourself and you know you're going to get the job done? Oh, man, there's, uh, there's always moments where you're, you're doubting yourself, but you, you always just got to believe and uh, I mean I, I pushed through that doubt and I, uh, I mean I got it I'm, I'm really really happy with my effort yes you did again hats off to you. you got points in every single sprint you won the thing you guys had a little mini break to end it it was a very impressive ride I know the future's bright congratulations on being a national champ and uh, again thanks for the great ride yeah thank you thanks everybody for coming awesome So we got one more race, and then we'll have two more award ceremonies. We got the decider for men's gold. Riders to the ready area. We need Bonilla and Hawk in the ready area. Your race, the third and final, the decider for the national champion in men's 15 to 18 sprint. got an aerodynamic carbon frame like Van Aert and the same smooth group set as Van der Poel. The same wheels as Vingegaard and Voss. Cool kit like Carapaz and a courage of Cannonball Cavendish. You got it all, but you haven't got the cotton tires the pros ride until now.
Al, we're about to close the night out here with a battle for a national championship. You got to love it. Yep, we're up on the third ride, the decider in uh, heat for gold and silver between Grayson Hawk of Allentown, Pennsylvania and Louis Bonilla of Long Beach, California. Each has won one ride. Louie and Grayson here, both split one and one like you said. I mean, they're both very, very close. National title on the line. It's late, they've been racing all day. The mental side of it plays into it, the physical side, the tactical side. It's gonna be a great finish tonight. night one here. I'm really excited to see this one. Hawk in the white helmet, starting from draw, drew the inside position. Louis Bonilla riding for Los Angeles Bicycle Academy. And Bonilla goes first. Bonilla hits the 200 meter line, big bunch of daylight between him and Grayson Hawk. Grayson Hawk closing it in. Bonilla still keeping that gap open as he comes onto the home straight, trying to come around and ooh, Bonilla. Almost a full bike length. Louis Bonilla, national champion. What a race that was to finish the night. Congrats to both riders, and we've got a national champion, Louis Bonilla. Great job. Flew down with about a lap and a quarter to go and let it out and was able to hang on. Congratulations. Okay, we're gonna have our final set of awards here. Divya Verma, Annika Flanagan, Danielle Scoville. And we need Bonilla, Hawk, and Anderson on the infield as well. Our final set of awards. We can round out session number two of day number one of the USA Cycling Elite Junior and Para Track Cycling National Championships. Once again, need Verma, Flanagan, Scoville, Patish, uh, Anderson, Bonilla, and Hawk in the awards area. All right, please join me in congratulating bronze medalist in the women's sprint, 15 to 18 sprint. Give it up for Danielle Scoville of Jerry Baker Juniors.
Now please join me in congratulating second place finisher and silver medalist Annika Flanagan. Now please join me in congratulating first place finisher, gold medalist, and 2023 national champion in the women's 15 to 18 sprint, Divya Verma. Your women's 15 to 18 sprint podium. I'm here with Divya. Divya, congratulations on the national title. How are you feeling right now to be wearing that jersey? I'm feeling pretty good, happy with how today went. So going into that last race, your racing teammates, I was mentioning earlier, kind of iron sharpens iron. Uh, talk to me about just the culture you have over there at Edge Cycling. It seems like all you are very close. You had a great showing today. Again, it was pretty cool to see two of you battling out for a national title. Yeah, we're all very supportive of each other, so I was really excited to go into that ride with her and just, yeah, it, it went really well for both of us. Well, congratulations again to you on the national championship and to Edge Cycling on a, on a gold silver there and the juniors and all the best. Thank you. All right, so I need Anderson, Hawk, and it looks like I've got Bonilla. There's Anderson. So there's, where's Hawk? Oh, there he is. All right, so please join me in congratulating third place finisher and bronze medalist Donnell Anderson of Detroit, Michigan. Now please join me in congratulating second place finisher silver medalist Grayson Hawk of Allentown, Pennsylvania. Now please join me in congratulating first place finisher gold medalist in your 2023 men's 15 to 18 sprint champion, Luis Bonilla of Los Angeles Bicycle Academy from Long Beach, California. Your men's 15 to 18 sprint podium.
All right, and I'm here now with the first ever national title for you. Louis, congratulations. You got to be pretty amped. I saw you screaming a little bit. It was a tough battle between you and Grayson. Talk to me about your mentality in that third race. Oh, man. Uh, it was tough. I took that first one, and, you know, coming into the second, I thought it'd be the same game, but obviously he wasn't going to let that happen. So I had to change up my strategy and catch him off guard and get out in front like I, like I need to, you know. Yeah, so I, I noticed, was that the plan for you going into the third uh, race there? You really ripped it coming out of four. Was that what you, you, you know, you and your coaches got together and executed that? Was that was the plan all along? Yeah, I mean, there was a few plans. It was either going to do the same thing and see if I can make it work, but obviously that didn't happen the second time, so I needed to switch something up. And when I saw the opportunity and he was looking forward, I just took it. No hesitation. Well, congratulations, my guy. I, I know everybody here in L.A. is super proud of you. I was privileged to race you a little bit in the Skunk Works races. And just what you've been able to accomplish here today, I mean, the sky's the limit for you, man. Congrats on your first national title. Very hard fought, well earned, my guy. Thank you so much. Thank you to my coaches and all my competitors. Oh, one more thing. Thank you to Roger and Kevin and Gibby and all my coaches from the track, P, BJ, all of them. They all helped me and helped me get this gold right here. Congratulations. All right, a lot of gratitude there, and a good note to finish. Night number one of the Junior Elite and Paracycling Track National Championships coming to you live from Carson, California. We'll be here again tomorrow morning for the qualifiers and the finals in the evening on the second of this five-day event. Looking forward to seeing you then. Good night.